Hello everyone. So today I want to work out another example with AC circuit analysis. And this particular example can be a little tricky, but I think it will really give you a better understanding of how all the different phase relationships between the current and voltage in an AC circuit actually work. So this is the problem that we are given. We have basically three different quantities that we want to find, and we are given all of these uh, values here. The, the magnitude of the voltage across the resistor, the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor. We're also given the magnitude of the voltage across the inductor. And so using uh, these given values, they want us to find one, the angle, the phase angle of I1 relative to this phase angle. Two, they want us to find the magnitude of this source voltage Vs, and then the actual magnitude of X. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually shift the phase of the whole problem. Notice here that this used to be X degrees, and I just changed this to zero degrees. But then what I did is I took the phase that was zero degrees here and shifted it back by minus x degrees. And you can do that because essentially phase is relative. The circuit doesn't really care about the, the absolute value of phase, but the circuit really all it's doing is it produces relative differences in phase. So if I input a voltage with a phase of minus x, then it will produce a phase of zero degrees here. Um, but it also works the, the other way with the way it was originally expressed in the problem where you have zero degrees and then X degrees here. But the point is it's the relative phase that matters. So when I'm solving this problem, I went ahead and I just shifted um, the phase back. And the reason I did that is just to make our math a little bit easier when we're uh, trying to find the phase of I1. And when, if we find the phase of I1, then that will basically be the phase angle relative to this zero degree phase angle that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and, and solve for the phase of I1. First thing that I want you to notice is that here we're given the voltage and phase across the inductor, which means that we should be able to find the current um, through this and its phase angle through the inductor. And also if we know the voltage across this resistor, we should be able to know its phase angle as well and magnitude. If we know that, we can apply KCL to determine what the magnitude and phase of the current I1 is. So we'll go ahead and apply KCL. The current in I1 is equal to the current out, which is IR2 and IL here. Then we'll go ahead and directly plug in our values here. We know that 30 angle zero degrees is the voltage across the resistor here. Divided by five ohms here will give you the um, current through the resistor. And then we are given the magnitude of the current through the inductor, which is eight amps. So that'll be eight angle ni minus 90 degrees. The reason it is minus 90 degrees is because you have to remember that the voltage across, or I'm sorry, the, the current through a inductor always lags the voltage by minus 90 degrees. So, or I should say, I should say it, it lags the, the, the voltage by 90 degrees, which means you subtract 90 um, and, and that will give you the phase of the current through the inductor. So then uh, you can go ahead and just simplify this math and you get uh, six minus J eight. And we can then convert that into polar form here. And I've converted this value to degrees here. 
And so the, the phase angle of your current I1 is the phase angle relative to this because we, um, we set this equal to zero degrees. So that's our answer for the first part of the problem, B1 or the phase angle of I1 relative to the zero degree phase angle of BL. That is, that is going to be minus 53.13 degrees. So then the next step is to find what Vs is. We've already solved for I1 here. So I've included to put that in green to show that it's something that we've solved for. And now what we want to do is we want to find this magnitude and then eventually we'll find this phase as well. So if we're wanting to find a voltage, it makes sense that we might want to think about using KVL, right? And so like we could think, oh, well, maybe I can do a KVL loop around here. And you are right, you can, you can definitely do that. We just need to know what these voltages are around the loop. Well, if you think about it, we know what I1 is, right? So therefore, um, we can then know what the magnitude and phase of the voltage is across this capacitor, because we're, we're given the magnitude already. But if we know this phase of the current going through it, then we can know what the phase is across the voltage. And then if we know the, the current through this resistor, we can also calculate what the magnitude and, uh, or what the uh, voltage is across the resistor. So let's go ahead and apply KCL here. Um, let's first, uh, let's first uh, make sure we understand what we're doing with the voltages here. So VR1, that's going to have a magnitude of 11 volts, and that's just because it was given to us over here. And then the phase angle will be minus 53.13 degrees, the same phase angle as the current. And that's because the voltage and the current through a resistor is always, always, always the same, has the, it always has the same phase. So we just give that the same phase. Then for VC, we're given that it's 12 volts, the magnitude. So we just give it 12. Its angle, though, its angle will be different because we know that the voltage always lags um, the, the current through, through a, on a capacitor by 90 degrees. So it's going to have, we know the phase of the current through the capacitor is minus 53.13 degrees because this is the current. But then it's going to, the voltage is going to be lagging by 90 degrees, so we have to subtract 90 degrees. So there are, there are the voltages we have there. So then we can go ahead and apply KVL here. So we're going around this loop here, in this direction. Here I hit a minus sign, so we do minus this voltage term here. So minus Vs angle negative x degrees. Then we hit a plus sign here, so that will be plus VR1. Then we hit plus VC here, so that will be plus VC. And then we hit plus VL here, and so that'll be plus VL, all equal to zero. So then what we can do is we can take these values and plug them in like that. And then the next step is to go ahead and simplify our equation here. We can simplify it with Euler's formula, just applying e to the j theta equals cosine theta plus j sine theta. And I simplified that and I got this complex number in rectangular form. You can use a calculator or uh, like a standard TI calculator or MATLAB to do that. And then I rearranged it into the following form. Now, one thing I want to point out that uh, may, may be easy to miss is that it actually turns out with this equation, we can solve for the magnitude of Vs and for the phase angle x. And you might think to yourself, but wait a minute, we have two unknowns. We've got Vs, and then we have the angle here. Two unknowns, but we only have one equation, so how, how can we solve for that? Well, it turns out that we actually have two equations embedded into this, 
because there's a real part and the real parts are equal to each other and then there's an imaginary part as well and the imaginary parts are equal to each other so you actually have two equations embedded into one which allows you to actually solve simultaneously for the voltage and the phase so this actually if we want to find the magnitude of the voltage here we simply have to take the magnitude of this complex number here and to find the phase we simply take the the inverse tangent here i have a factor of 180 over pi here in order to convert it into degrees here so that means here that our voltage is 31.38 volts and our value for x in degrees is basically the the opposite of this because we have a negative sign here so it's positive 30.65 degrees so i know that was a lot of steps but I would just encourage you to go over it carefully, and I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, uh, would you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel? That will help other people find it. And if, if you won't do it for me, will you do it for my cat, Muon? Named after my favorite subatomic particle, by the way. So, um, she will be very, very upset if you do not like and subscribe. So please, um, don't, don't disappoint. How, how could you say no to this cuteness?